Yes, 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 yes. It is time once again for three guys before the game. We return after what to me seemed like about a five-week sabbatical, but it's only been seven days. Well, maybe it's been five weeks if you count the last time the third guy was here. Finally, he's back. Didn't find my way here. I'll tell you what. Parking place was getting away. Without that Amber Alert, finally found him. <laughs> hanging around in a Go-Mart somewhere down in McDowell County. You can spend a lot of time in Go-Mart. I mean, oh. a lot of things. A lot of, a lot stuff of things. going on there. Yeah. yeah. Live there. Plus, as the, uh, as the seasons change, really, now you can stand outside, too, for propane gas. That'll get cranked up here pretty soon. <laughs> I don't do a whole lot in the You're winter, right. but I tell you what, when that spring and summer comes, that propane gas goes right out the door. Yep. Three guys before the game brought to you by the Burdett Camping Center, the only Warranty Forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit BurdettCamping.com, located in Winfield, and on the website, BurdettCamping.com. Both of those T's are next to each other, separated on each side by an E. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. If you're a business owner, if you're in a business and you need to keep your stuff safe, Comax Business Systems would be the people that we would strongly recommend, West Virginia-based, doing it now for 25-plus years, and they know how to manage your IT, manage your phone systems as well, plus obviously all of the other gear that goes with running a business, ComaxWV.com. Three Guys Before the Game is also brought to us by GoMart. You know, we love Reese's. Who doesn't? GoMart, along with Reese's, is giving away some. What? Egg extravagant prizes at the end of this April, including a $500 GoMart gift card. More information, all you have to do is visit GoMart.com. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Nice. Won't give you a $500 Reese cup. Gonna have Reese you said so extravagant, so that leads me to believe that yeah. shapes are involved in Easter, this. It's Easter related. Yeah. Egg extravagant. It's a good ratio in this, Kurt. Yeah, absolutely. It's well like, documented. You can get a Reese cup right now. Go Mart so big that when you drive down the interstate, they have that oversized load car behind what you're going to drive. That's how big that egg is. Otherwise, it kind of goes a lane and a half. Big egg. Nice. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales, located in St. Albans. What do they do? They sell family fun. Visit them, LouWendellMarineSales.com, the premier pontoon dealer in the state of West Virginia and beyond. So here we go. The Mountaineers have advanced to the NCAA tournament. The women's basketball team has also advanced to the NCAA tournament, which qualifies this as a happy podcast. It qualifies this as a good year. For Mountaineer basketball, when both of your teams can make the NCAA tournament, that's a good year. Many had written off the WVU women's team, but a la Geno Smith, the women's team did not write back, and they made it in. And they will be, coincidentally, at Maryland to participate in their NCAA tournament games, opening up against Arizona on Friday, and then would, uh, if they were to advance, um, would play again on Sunday. We'll give you a little women's matchup nugget coming a little bit later. Oh, you broke that me? down just too? a little bit, not as much, not as extensively as the men. We got a little couple nuggets for you. We'll look. Hey, at. What, what a great, what a great story that is. I mean, first year for the new head coach, and you go out and you figure, you know, you get a pass on your first year, right, Brad? Yes. New players. Year uh, zero, Hoppy. Year, year zero. zero. Yeah, year, year zero. zero. And you go out and you you get in the NCAA tournament, knock off Baylor twice. I mean, that is a heck of a year. Well, and the way they lost that Big 12 tournament game where they, they controlled the game the entire way. I mean, led from a minute to go in the first quarter all the way to point one second, lost on a last second shot. Many, including the ESPN bracketologists, said they had to win to get in that game. For them to not end the season that way, I think is a great thing. Awesome for Coach P and that program to get into that tournament. 100%. I had one of those deals where – we were coming back from Kansas City, and I was listening to the women's game. They were playing right at that moment. And they're up by like three or four, and there's two minutes to go, and we took off. And, you know, once you take off, 
you get a little bit of that cell service for just a little bit, and then you know as soon as you get up high enough, you're going to lose those towers. And anyway, you need to put that in airplane mode, they'll tell you. Yeah, they do. They do tell me that. Anyway, it morphed out. And, I, and uh, sometimes we get Wi-Fi on the plane, sometimes we don't. I didn't have it. And then when we got down close enough, and I went, oh, are you kidding me? Broke my heart. Broke my heart. That's where you should be able, though. You can go up. I mean, it's a charter, right? Yeah. So you send somebody up, and you ask the pilot to radio eh. somebody. Nah, I'd rather have him have both hands on the yoke. <laughs> both hands on the yoke's fine. Plus, I mean, it's I'm, not 1989. Just get Wi-Fi on the thing. Well, I mean, that's come true, on. too. Well, yeah, it works sometimes. Right? No, it works yeah. sometimes. It does work sometimes. Like intermittent. Sometimes. It should just be all the time. Well, just I mean, get it done. Guys, think about what we're talking about. What? Get it done. Now, now think about what we're talking about. Now, I'm all for technology. Yes. Well, you're flying at 550 miles per hour. And you're bummed out that you don't have internet. Yes. It's coming. It's coming. Be it's getting fax? better. It's getting better. I'm not going to complain on that one. You know I complain about a lot of stuff. I'm not going to complain on that one. All right. It's an odd thing for you not to complain about. No, I'm all right. complain about some weird stuff. I just want the... You know, they got other things to do. Just fly well, it straight. You can do more than one thing at once. Yeah, just fly it straight. I'm good with it. Anyway. So, Senator, is, Senator isn't playing. As you know, we do this show unscripted. In case you yeah. and, and <laughs> wonder whatsoever, this is not a scripted there. program. <laughs> but the, so the senator and I normally do not conversate before we start the show. But I'll tell you what, old hop. What? A little buddy here. He like he's been he's had a consensus All American year in analytic oh. previews, right? So now <laughs> unbelievable. So now now he's saying like, fine, All American. I don't want to just be one of the All Americans. I want to win the John Wooden Award. For basketball previews. So I started talking to, I mean, his, <laughs> was it last night? I mean, how, since it well, was like I saw one, one of the early announcements last night, one of the within, first ones. Within 90 minutes of the first announcement, the old boy's got, he's got, he's got stop, tempo play, free throws. He got the whole thing out on Twitter. He was ready. He was ready. So now you're going to come with it strong, right? I got stuff. Why not? Yeah. Stuff. Oh, we also have, uh, we also have texts. Probably about six billion since we haven't been here in a week. Yeah, there were over fifty. Took me about ninety minutes last night. Plus, we have a new segment talk about our uh, live interactions with people because that was heavy over the last uh, week. Yes, very much so. You, you as well. Had, you had some uh, live interactions. I did. I was uh, was uh, among the people at uh, Charleston for the girls' high school basketball tournament. West Virginia legislature. A lot of interaction. A lot of interaction. We'll, a lot do, of, we'll do that. Three later. guys references. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We'll do that later. All right, let's jump in. Good matchup, bad matchup, West Virginia, Maryland. As you would expect, 8-9, flip a coin. And I mean almost literally flip a coin in this. The line opened just like you would think it would, right around 1. It's since moved to 2.5. The total's on the way down just a little bit. So it's, it, it's a coin flip game, as you would expect, between 8 and 9 seeds. I think what stands out, and nationally what's getting some run, the 9 is favored. West Virginia is the favored team. You're getting some some love from the conferences bringing you along. And then here's one. We'll, we'll get into the details here, and I'll do the scouting report. But I think the one to watch here, th this, is, this is in essence the battle. Which of these teams can perform away from home? That's the biggest knock against Maryland. As you start to go down their list of away or neutral court wins, they just don't have it, guys. They've only got five wins away from home. Their best neutral win is over Miami, which is a nice win. Miami in the tournament, some people think they'll make some noise. That was way back on November 20th. Their only away wins, Hoppy, since then are Louisville at 295 in the Ken Palm rankings and Minnesota, who's ranked 217 in the Ken Palm rankings, Maryland got them on the road and in the Big Ten tournament. So they have some good home wins. You go down their list, they've, they've beaten Purdue at home and some others. So they've been good in College Park, not so much away from home. But I think you can kind of say the same thing about West Virginia, sure. can't you? Yeah. You have better wins. Now, you closed late. The win over Iowa State on the road is significant. Beating Texas Tech on the road and in the Big Ten tournament, they're ranked 61st in Ken Palm. But that's the one to watch. Which of these teams can show it can go away from home and get wins? So begin with that. But I think it's a it's a very tough matchup here. I think. Yeah. Start there. Let me. And then I'll get into it. Let me go macro. That that I you when I when I was watching it yesterday, I thought, what a great matchup. What a, of sixty eight teams, whatever it is. I mean, that you're matched up with Maryland. 
you don't play them a lot anymore. The last game was what, 2015, Tony? Is that right? Yeah, NCAA, yep. But there's a there's a natural rivalry there because of playing them some in basketball and a lot in football. There's there's that. There's the regional rivalry. Maryland is a name program. Okay, they're not what they maybe have been in previous years, but it's still a name. Okay, so I like that. I like the fact that you're playing that Thursday, like one of the first games. So, you know, you're going to be talked about. Everybody's excited on that first day and who these first games are. And Tony, as you said on my public affairs show, you win and you're talked about all day. You're going to be talked about. You're in the bracket with Alabama. The downside is you're in the bracket with Alabama. The the upside is, you know, if you get if you win the first round game. That, that is an incredible turnaround from last season and from the 0-5 league start. That's, that's remarkable. That, that really is enough. And then if you get Alabama, you're the national story because you're playing the number one team, right? Yes. So take your, take your shot. See what happens. Yes. And you got the connection because of Shane Lyons now in Alabama. There's just a lot of things about this game that I think are, are at least pique our interest and also stimulate some national interest in this game. Well, that's a good point. You made the, made the point on the national interest there, but I'll, I'll go further. You're the first game of the tournament, too. So you're opening this thing, and it's a great 8-9 matchup. This is one that's going to get talked a lot about. If you've watched any shows here over the course of the first day that this is out, this is one like that ev- I mean, every that's- show is talking about this particular game. So, yeah, you've got a, you've got a grand stage here to start this tournament. Because, people, because you're looking for a matchup where there's a game. Right. Yes. There's some interest because they're you know, yeah. one in sixteen or whatever. I mean, but eight nine, seven ten. Well, eight nine with a nine favored. Like okay, people gravitate towards that too. Like oh hey, look at that because there's not many of them. There's like six games where the the worst seed is favored over the better seed. This is one of them. And this is a little. This is just a little thing too. But again, adding to the to the elements of this is that the games in Birmingham and there's a little history with Birmingham. West Virginia's played in Birmingham and basketball played there in football. And so there's just there's just a lot of things that make sense about this game. I, I'm kind of excited right now. You should be. No, I'm excited because he's about ready to go in. He's ready to go ready. in to he's go get, deep? He's going to get ready to pull these covers back. All right. Ready? Oh, wait, should I do? Wait a second. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to get your song, but. I'll wait for it here a second. Probably got controversy, by uh, the way. Hunter told, uh, told me last time I was on Sportsline for Sunday Sportsline for a few minutes talking to the guys about this. He Hunter mentioned this is only the second time West Virginia and Maryland have played in the last 20 years. The only time was in that NCAA tournament. Remember yeah. West Virginia got Buffalo in that first game when Bobby Hurley was coaching, then got Maryland in the second game. Really fun two games there. Yeah. Two times in 20 years? That I game guess. should probably be on the schedule, it, shouldn't it? It should. It well, should. Well, yeah, because they weren't playing when Gary Williams was the coach. We did play him when Gary was a coach, but that kind of – he wasn't interested. You remember? Yes, I remember, I remember that. He didn't want to play. BB&T Bank, does that still exist? No. I don't know that, but – we the, played them out there in a tournament. There was a four-teamer. It was Maryland, West Virginia, Georgetown, and somebody else. That's uh, the last time uh, I think that we had played them regular season. Gary Williams did not want to play the game, or West Virginia did not want to play the game. So I don't know exactly why that all Tony, happened. can I give you a little history? Uh, because that's one of the advantages of age. Is I was at... The 1984 NCAA second round huh? game wow. between West Virginia and Maryland. Wow. And I had to double check here because, and I think it was in Birmingham, Birmingham or Greensboro or someplace. And West Virginia, I think, won the first round game. March 17, St. Patrick's Day, 1984, Hoppy. 1984. The first round game beat Oregon State, right? Yes. J.J. Crawl stole the basketball, right? Mm-hmm. Beat Oregon State, which might have been an upset. Might have been upset. Then they played Maryland. Ralph Brett. Miller coaching then? Ralph Miller yes. at Oregon yes. State? Yes. 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 Yeah. Good job on Ralph Miller. Then they play the left-hander. Yeah. And who's on this team, Brad? <laughs> Lenny Bias. Lynn Bias, yeah. Adrian Branch, mm-hmm. Big Ben Coleman, Keith Gatlin was a reserve. Oh, he was good. He yeah, and he had 10 in the game, yeah. five of eight from the field. West Virginia had the starters were Tim Carney, Dale Blaney, Lester Rowe, Vernon Odom, Mike King, reserves Bernardo Brown, J.J. Crawl, Eric Simich, uh, Daryl Pinckney. So, and West Virginia got whacked. I mean, because that was a really, I got beat 30, I think. That was a Boat really. Boat raced, 102-77 was your final. How many did Lenny have? 
Len Bias 18. had 18 on six of nine from the field, six of six from the free throw line. And by the way, pre three point shot, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was right. that pre three point yeah. shot? Yeah. Big Ben Coleman had 19. Uh, Herman Veal had 18. I mean, that was a really, I remember sitting there watching, I think, oh, this, this is a pretty good team. Lester Rowe led the Mountaineers with 18 and five. Vernon Odom had 14. Yeah, some names. Was, I don't know what, I, and I thought, you know, you're sitting there and you're a prisoner of the moment. I said, this team, Maryland's going to win it all. They're going to win the whole thing. <laughs> and I, I, they might have lost the next game. I don't remember, but they were. that was a good team. And of course, then Lenny Bias, you know, that was, sure. that was, might have been the, was he a senior then? Well, he didn't stay all four years, he I wouldn't think. I'll look that up. I'll look that up. He played a hundred. No, he was there. He was there. What, what two years, three? Two, no, three yeah, years? he was there a little bit later than that. He had another okay. year or so. Yeah, he did because he Couple played years. here. Yeah, he, I think he. I saw him play here. So did that's you? after okay. '84. So he played here. Well, I'll look right now. Um, nevertheless, okay, he was drafted in '86, so he played like '84, '85. Yeah, because then that's he, he was drafted like and then passed away that right the, that yeah. night of the draft. They played at the Coliseum. No, he played four years in December of '85. They played at the Coliseum. West Virginia lost the game. 42-41. Wow. Well, excuse me? It's working clock. They lost the game 42-41 in the, in the Coliseum, December of 86. Is he 42-41? Yeah, and Len Bias had 16. Is that 1918? He was the only player for Maryland in double figures. West Virginia did not have a double-digit score. I mean, they get the ball, couldn't get the ball, the peach basket? What? I mean, no. They, it was 27-20. Listen to this. It was 27-27 at halftime. Maryland outscored West Virginia the second half, fifteen to fourteen. Wow! What, what you got? You got Len Bias there in the and game. No shot clock, up. right? No shot clock. So just eight, eight clock. Yeah. By the way, Bias played four years in Maryland. He played all four. Wow! 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 Yeah, they had players. So that was a little history lesson. Okay, right? very good. All right, Senator. All right, let's dive in. Interesting numbers for them, and the reason, part of the reason this is a coin flip. These two teams sit right next to each other in the Ken Palm. Yeah. If you start to go down the list, they are they are extremely close. Maryland's seven or Maryland's twenty second, West Virginia's seventeen. Maryland's top thirty five in both categories. Thirty fifth offensive efficiency, thirty third defensive efficiency. Got twenty one wins on the season. So here's a couple things that jump out to me early with them. First and foremost, what do we have to talk about when we talk West Virginia? Get Free into throws. the foul line. Free throw line. Free throws. Here's what you don't like, guys. Maryland doesn't foul you often. 85th nationally in opponent free throw rate. Mm -hmm. So here's some context. All of the Big 12 teams reside between 102nd and 336th in that category. Texas Tech 102, Iowa State 335th in that category. Some of that may be just league-based and style of officiating, but early report, Maryland does not put you on the line very often. They also go extremely slow. Excuse me? This is a slow-paced team. You're going to average about... If, if it gets to their style, they average about 63 possessions per game. They're 312th out of 363. They like to go They're slow. turtles. They play just like their nickname. See? Yeah. They were the Panthers. Up Different. Down. Wouldn't yeah. make any sense. So one of the things, what do we always say about West Virginia? Run. Run a little bit more. Get out. Go, go, go. That's one thing you want to do against this team. Try and force them into more up tempo. We've seen West Virginia doesn't necessarily want to grind it down into a half court, pound the ball into the floor, start looking into the post to see is there anybody now? Can I look? Can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Is Jimmy Bell coming up? Four on the Can shot clock. Three on the is shot Jimmy clock. Bell over there? Two on the shot clock. And as you throw one up, don't want that. Uh, dude, don't want that. Let's go 94 feet. Let's go. Run. Run. Here's the other thing. That's a little bit of a concerning part of this matchup. Maryland is pretty solid in keeping the opponent off the offensive glass. 120th nationally is Maryland. So not bad. Those are a couple ways West Virginia wins games, Hop, right? Get to the free throw line and the offensive rebound, the best in the Big 12. So those are two things that jump to me early as well as pace. If Maryland can hit a couple shots on you and control that pace, then that's a potential problem. One of the ways they do that defensively, they'll give you a little bit of pressure They'll put some full court on you, not necessarily to steal the ball. They, they don't down. create a ton of turnovers. They just want you to work some time off the clock before you get into your offense. So West Virginia's going to have to handle the press as well against them. But a couple concerning things on the matchup front here. You think Coach Stevenson, you see this like 
try to break that pressure. See Coach Stevenson maybe taking a few out on the wing and just letting them fire. So you want to press? Here, take a little bit of this. How do you beat the press? You don't beat the press by getting across half court then pulling it back out. You punish them. Oh, is that right? You want to press us? We're going to go right to the rim on you, and we're going to pull up and hit a couple threes on you when you're pressing us, and you leave us open. The only thing there, though. Uh-oh. Now I don't, I don't mean to be all doom and gloom here. You are. The only thing I don't like here there when it comes to jump shots with Coach Stevenson, Maryland gives up the fewest unguarded jumpers per game in the Big Ten. They're going to be on your shoes. So they play pretty good defense there. Yeah, so they, they do some things that stylistically could cause some problems. Now, not a ton of size, though. Not, not real big in the interior. They have some guys. They have some athletes, but not real big in the middle. Can West Virginia change some of those numbers? Can West Virginia getting it to the basket force some fouls that they wouldn't normally create? Can West Virginia hit some shots? Can they hit the offensive glass? and force Maryland to have to to be at that disadvantage without the size. I mean, again, this is one of those which team imposes its will on the other because when you have when you have matchup points like that that are diametrically opposed, that doesn't mean you can't make them do what you want to do and that that will determine the game, right? Who imposes the will? Which one of those teams can say, "Oh, is that right? I don't care that you don't foul. You're going to foul us." Because you haven't guarded Kedrian Johnson going to the basket. Well, is that right? You, you're pretty good defensive rebounding. You haven't watched West Virginia and us offensive rebounding. You haven't so. met the backside of Jimmy Bell. So, which of those comes out? Jimmy's a big man. Great feet. So, there you go. There's an early. That's good. There's an early thing. The, the, the thing offensively, that like that without them forcing a ton of turnovers, that usually bodes well for West Virginia. West Virginia can struggle at times against teams that really get up on you and force turnovers. This Maryland team doesn't do that. So if you if you think of them in the macro there, what they're going to try and do, they're going to try and shorten the game on you. They're going to play solid defense. They're not going to gamble a ton. They're not going to play, right, real aggressive defense. They're just going to kind of just say, it's, keep everything in front of us here. They don't shoot a ton of threes. They're not great from two. So they're they're pretty good in a lot of areas. You look through their numbers, though, and there isn't a lot of things where you just go, oh, my God, wow. Wow. They, yeah. they're, not, they're not a wow, but they find ways to get wins. To your point, they don't foul. They have taken 117 more foul shots this season than the opposition. How do, they do, how do you do that? How do you do not that? Not foul? Yeah. I mean, how do you play good enough defense to win games and get to the tournament and not foul? I think probably you're, you're fundamentally really solid and you play – as one cohesive group, probably. And like I said, you're not you're not gambling a lot. You're not trying to create a bunch of steals. You're just you're just playing good defense. They got a shooter, get up on the shooter, don't foul the shooter. Okay. Right? Stay in front of your man. Don't let them drive you to the basket. Just stay in front of them, force you to take a bad shot. Yeah, so, you're, you're not there, jumping there, out in a passing lane so that you get beat so that you when the guy gets by you, you're reaching around to try to get you're not doing that. There's not a lot of risk reward. Kind of like the way you live your life. Very, very Risk averse, risk averse, very conservative. Mm-hmm. I mean, you run your life like Maryland plays defense. You're just gonna let the guy stand in front of you. Just don't want him to get behind you. And I'm content with that. Hold my position on the court. Just stay where right. I am. Like Chuck doesn't come over into your yard, your neighbor. You don't go over into Chuck's yard. Everything is just kind of cool. Hold my position. You're not. You're not aggressively trying to to gain. I'm entitled to the place West on the court, too. Whereas West Virginia plays the complete opposite. Right. They're just West Virginia would love, if possible, would love to have their hand on your hip as soon as you take the ball. That's their whole thing is for ball pressure to make you uncomfortable, to lead to bad passes, to lead to turnovers. It's the opposite. And so there's an impose your will. This team, Maryland, doesn't turn it over normally, 10.5 per game. They're one of the better teams in the country. Some of that's pace-related. Right? Some of that's, let's slow it down. We're not going to run all over, throw these crazy passes. We're just going to be conservative. Yes. That risk averse, just play smart, play good. Yeah. Can West Virginia get up on you and force you to speed up and force some of those turnovers? Can you get to 15 turnovers here against this team? Of course, by the same token, I guess the other side of that is they're fundamentally sound on defense, Brad. You get behind a little bit and you start to force and you can't. And they, they oh, now you're because they're. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know? Because they're oftentimes, you go back to the old, old days and John Chaney. People always used to rave about John Cheney's defense, how many few points they would allow. Well, you know why that was. A two-three zone? Well, or we that's could, yeah, well, yeah, but it was on the offensive end, they wouldn't go fast. Oh, no, that's right. So they yeah. limit the number of times they have to play defense by shortening the game. 
So that's the same thing with these guys. It's not that these guys are the best defense that West Virginia will have faced this season. It's that they play a significantly lower tempo offensively, which is going to limit, as Brad said, what they say, 63 or 68 possessions? 63-ish. West Virginia's closer wants to be 69 and can play better with you if you go even faster. Yes. Right? If you want to be Kansas State and TCU and get up and down, generally West Virginia says, yeah. okay, let's go. Coach, we'll Stevens, Coach Stevenson, player Coach Stevenson, and player Coach Matthews. Emmett Matthews' game is designed to, 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 to go back baseline a bit. That's where he is at his best. So that so that tells me that this is not a great matchup, right? No. It, it's not, but that's what you're going to get in an 8-9, right? I mean, you're going to get two teams that are pretty even right here. Yeah, but, the, the things that they they don't allow, that's, that's problematic. The things you're trying for, to do. Yeah, that's potentially problematic. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. This isn't one that on paper jumps out and you go, okay, this is really good. This is really good here. Okay. It's, it's just all comes down to... Has West Virginia been tested more than Maryland? And does that reap, do you reap the rewards for that now in this kind of game against a team that statistically looks pretty good, that does some things that you usually have problems with? Can you just say, don't care, we're just better than you? We've, we've been tested more, let's go. That's going to be the question. Yeah, and whistle. Whistle becomes more prominent, and you know I am a strong advocate. I've gone on record repeatedly saying that the whistle has been good for West Virginia this year. It's been good for the decade plus that West Virginia has been in the Big 12. And I use facts to back that up by saying West Virginia has attempted more free throws than any other school in the league. However, here's the difference. When it is the middle of January and Hoppy Kerchival is officiating the West Virginia game, Hoppy Kerchival knows if it's Wednesday where he's working on Saturday. Okay. This is the NCAA tournament. You are, as an official, advanced in the tournament based upon your officiating in that game. You follow oh, me? Oh, really? Sure. Oh, sure. You're okay. not a guarantee to advance. It's okay. based upon your performance. So, this is how the whistle becomes important. Does an official call it ticky-tack if West Virginia gets up in on you because he's concerned that the supervisor's going to say, dude, you, you didn't call it. They were all over them. Does West Virginia – or sometimes you see the opposite of that. Sometimes it's the NCAA tournament. Let basketballers be basketballers, and they let them go. So you have to be extremely self-aware – as a team, within the first four minutes of the game, yeah. how are they calling this thing? If you can get away with a little, you get away with a little bit of that, a little bit of that, okay, they're going to let us go. If the first time Kedrian Johnson puts his hand on somebody and there's just slight contact, uh -oh. you immediately as a group have to go, all right, that's going to get us killed if we do that today. You got to play. Because Hoppy, the referee, wants to re referee on Saturday. Interesting. That's the that's the one time in the year where you have to be extremely observant of the officials. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, Tony, I was at the girls' tournament last week, and before several of the games, I got a chance to talk to the refs. I love that because I, I was just Tony creating them. I mean, just get, give me some stuff. Give me what some insights. What does that mean? Tony I mean, just Carita. talking to them. When do you make this call? Why don't you make that call? Yeah. When do you tee somebody up? Why do you do that? It was fascinating. I think you know we don't get enough. I wish that we could talk to them more. You know, and I know well, after you can the talk game you don't. To them. Huh? Oh, not during. I mean, but we have a an official official that comes on sports line. I know, but I mean, I think it would be relevant. I guess you can't. It'd be too much second guessing. But like after the game, pool reporter. You want pool report like the a NBA? Pool report like about making calls. And I know it, it's very very hard because a lot of it's subjective, but. Yeah, uh, it would be interesting because you really do get a good, you know, in football, you you get an explanation, at least when they make the call. Right. Basketball, you many not sometimes you do, but lots of times you don't. So just doing a quick perusal here, I'll, I'll try and do some of this on Twitter as I dive in with some more time on, you know, I mentioned in this free throw thing. Is that a league based deal? Is that just the way, to Tony's point there, the way the games are officiated within that league? A quick look down through the Big Ten. They have multiple schools that are 200, 220 plus when it comes to free throw attempt rate. So they have a league that doesn't look like there were a ton of fouls or a bunch of teams getting to the line. So even though the numbers tell you Maryland's not going to foul, let's see how this game works with West Virginia's style and, as you said, Tony, what's the crew going to do and how they're going to call this? Yeah, Spring has sprung. The grass has riz. 
I wonder where them pretty flowers is. Well, it's time for you to get your recreational vehicle out, and our good folks at Burdett Camping are offering you an unbelievable deal. Right now, on a fifth wheel, it's the Forest River Rockwood Ultralight fifth wheel, the uh, 244.5 WS series. $10,000 off American money. $10,000 off. Unbelievable camp kitchen, pass-through storage, ceiling fan, hide-to-bed sofa, wardrobe slide, 39-inch booth dinette, plus a 20-foot, 20-foot power awning, plus a whole lot more. $10,000 off. Visit our good friends at Burdett Camping Center. They happen to be the only warranty forever RV dealer in the state of West Virginia, and that is what it sounds like. You own it. The RV lasts forever. Unlike the uh, KitchenAid mixer that broke on me this weekend what, when I was me? trying to make yeah, excuse ki- me KitchenAid uh, sa- uh, mixer that's supposed making, to last a lifetime. Those making things. pasta and uh, things stopped spinning, burned up the motor. I don't know. Too much use. Could be been making a lot of pasta. Warranty forever on that, like uh, a one year. Camper. One year. That's where I said I screamed out. Joan said Joan was what? upstairs. Joan one was year. upstairs, Not and I screamed out and I said Burdett, and she said what, and I said. The Burdette Camper, the warranty lasts forever. The KitchenAid mixer was one year. Not good. Not good enough. So I got a whole deal. So it, it just stopped. Yeah. Burn up the motor. Yeah. I tell you, I went to YouTube and I said, can you fix Can I, I said, head old no. boy. Old boy took that thing apart. He might, he might as well do a heart surgery. You should have seen that. Unbelievable. Did you take yeah. it apart? No, I don't have the part. I'm going to send it. Just going to pay the 200 bucks. Get it over with. By the way, uh, the Big 12 should not have any trouble when they send that information on the game time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, update. Go ahead, because by the way, I'm not done with Maryland here. I got a couple more things. But go ahead. You go. Let's do players real quick. Oh yeah. Want to do four players to watch because they yep. have four guys in double figures. Yep. Jameer Young, leading scorer, transfer from Charlotte. He was a two-time first-team All-CUSA, one of the best players in the – are they in the ACC or Big Ten? Kidding. Big I know. Ten. Big Ten. Here's some comparisons. Tried something new this time. I'm going to give you some comparisons. Statistically, who do they compare, they to? compare to in the Big 12? Wow, that's mm. good stuff. And so yeah, this man. will start to tell you a little bit how similar this matchup is. Watch this when we get into this hop real quick. You ready? Yeah. So comparisons for Jameer Young. Avery Anderson. Oh, a good player. Damian Baugh. Oh, good player. Keontae George. Sir Jabari Rice. Oh, my gosh. So he's their player. He's their dude. You're going to have to guard him. That's the guy you watch. He's mostly. Those four guys, though, I don't want to play those four guys. Well, you're you're getting one. (laughs) Jameer Young's right in their category, statistically. Mostly twos. He's only going to take about four threes per game. He wants to get to the rim and shoot from the paint. 55% of his shots either at the rim or he pulls up in the paint. So not a three-point shooter. He's going to penetrate. So what do you have to do when a guy that penetrates? Keep him out of lane. Keep him out of lane and don't foul him either, right? He wants to get to the line. 6'8 guard Hakeem Hart. I'm sorry? 6'8 guard Hakeem Hart, 11 and a half per game. His comparisons, Marcus Carr. This is statistical comparisons. Jacoby Coles and Caleb Ashbury. Hmm. He's good at the rim. 65% field goal percent at the rim. And he takes almost 40 of his shots there. So they are a team that wants to get to the rim on you, and they do shoot a fair number of free throws. Top 100 in that category. How about, so, how about the free throw percentage of those two guys you just said? 82 and 81. Yeah, they, and, and that's where they want to shoot it. That's why they go, go to the basket. So that, again, free throws a point of concern defensively for West Virginia because you're one of the bottom 30 teams in the country at putting the other team on the line. So that's what they're going to want to do. 6'8 forward, Donta Scott, 11 and a half per game. Did we see him? The name sounds really familiar. Imitap? Is that how we know him? Yes. I think you're right. Yeah. I kept looking at that, and I didn't I didn't go back into his history. Imitap. I think you're exactly right. Yeah. We did see him in the CRC. Up and, up and wheeling. Yes. Up and wheeling, we did his game. Thank you. That's yeah. been bugging me for 24 hours. Yes. Donta Scott. Now, his comparison, you may have heard of the first guy that statistically he compares to. A gentleman by the name of Emmett Matthews. Yep. So that's their Emmett Matthews. So he's like him and Micah Peavy are okay. the comparisons statistically. All right. So, But he'll shoot some threes on you. 32% of his shots are above the break threes, Hoppy. Above the break, non-corner threes. So that's what he'll do even though he's 6'8". Six, 6'9", six, Julian Reese, 11 per game. His comparisons. <laughs> have you heard of these guys? Mo Wagi and Jimmy Bell. Also compares statistically to Caleb Boone. His uh, he's a guy that gets to the rim. 60% of his shots at the rim. He's a 75% shooter 
on those shots, hasn't taken a three all season. 25% of their blocks on the season are his. So there's your there's some comparisons That's and good. some guys. Yeah. So you no see, one, hey, no, one else big... is gi- no one else is giving you that, are no, they? No, no, I don't think anybody else No has one that. else is giving you player comparisons. I don't, I don't think so. But you see some West Virginia comparisons pop up, which shows you how evenly matched these teams and are. And you said, what, it's West Virginia minus four, you said? Two, minus, two, two and a half. Two. Two and, a half. two and a half right now. Okay, there you go. Now I'm done. Let me just throw this out. That's so Let me just throw this out. Let me just well, throw this out. We only have one show. Wait a minute. Got to get a lot of info into the marketplace. You should go over to the Coliseum, to the <laughs> to the building, and, and yeah. Hug should turn things over to you, and you should have about 15 minutes with the players. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt them. Well, I've got a couple things for you guys. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Have a little slideshow. So, has anyone... Hoppy and Brad through the years ever opined the belief that West Virginia is treated unfairly as a team like West Virginia sports teams they don't get the respect that they're due they don't does anyone you've ever heard that uh, I, generated you know, at all over the years over the many many years I've been involved I've probably heard that once or twice okay so here is some empirical information that you can just you're really pushing back on this, aren't you? These, yes, I am, because I'm just tired of people espousing and putting BS out there. Think of this. West Virginia in Ken Palm is ranked 17th. 17th in Ken Palm with 14 losses. Yeah. <laughs> with 14 <laughs> losses. You're with me? Yeah. You have to go... To number 35, from 17 to 35 to find the next team that's got 14 losses. But West Virginia's never given any respect or credit. West Virginia advanced as an at-large tournament team in the NCAA tournament with seven league wins. Hoppy, do you know how many league wins Clemson has that did not get into the tournament? (laughs) Probably uh, uh, 10, 12. Yeah, 10, 12. Good, Hoppy. Plus two more after 12. 14 ACC wins. They didn't get into the tournament. (laughs) West Virginia got in with seven (laughs) league wins. So Clemson's over there going, we don't get any respect. Clemson's going like, West Virginia got in with seven league wins. (laughs) We had 14 league wins. We don't get any respect. In an ACC, that has not happened much in their history. Think about how times have changed. That league used to get 14 wins. You're probably the number one overall seed. So, So I bring this all up to simply say this. Stop. Just just stop. Yeah, no, it'll never. It'll. Never, I know no, it'll, never, it'll stop. never stop. It'll, it'll never it'll, stop. I know it'll never stop. But my point to that is that West Virginia is bathing, <laughs> bathing <laughs> in the Big Twelve bathwater, and oftentimes we get this question: you know, this Big Twelve, da 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 da. da what well, we should be in the ACC, da da da. No, no, and no. For those reasons I just gave you, yes, there are certain difficulties with playing in this league, but this is the best world that West Virginia could find itself in. Tony, I I agree with you, and I think that's well said. Add this in. You get an unbelievable, unquantifiable amount of value added because of Bob Huggins. Well, sure. Every, Every game you watch... There's going to be a Huggins, hug, multiple Huggins references. Hug multiple, fest. It's, it's a, a hug, hug fest. fest. Hug and fest. when you when you were zero and five, it was he'll get this thing turned around. Hall of Fame coach Brad, Hall of Fame coach, he'll get it turned around. Then you start to turn around. Huggins, Hall of Fame coach, got it turned around. Here's the background on Huggins. Here's where he coached. Here's where he, I mean, you got so much value added this season because of Bob Huggins. Unquantifiable. You also got the rise in analytics, not just on this program, but yes. nationally, has been tremendous. If this is the old days eye test, West Virginia is not in at 7-11. Right. They're just simply not. The, the rise of Ken Palm and things like that, where you can consistently look at that and see those numbers, it eliminates. I, I haven't heard anybody out there in the marketplace saying, what do you mean they got in? They only won seven conference games. There no. hasn't been one objection no. to that. You're four games below 500 in your league, and that isn't a, an objection from anybody right now. So don't discount what the rise in, in pure analytics has done either because the Big 12 really benefited, and West Virginia in particular benefited from you that know, this and, year. And Brad, the, the, the analytics are, are catching up and passing the record. Yes. Your record. Yes. Okay, so you lose a game or you win a game. It's like, okay, but how did, how did it affect the analytics? 
And here's what the analytics are. So the win-loss is less relevant to how you are perceived. Yeah, and and some of that, again, you, you probably shouldn't go one way too far in any of this, be it analytics or the other. But I think what you're, tr- what you're trying to do and what has helped is it's eliminated some of the human error out of that room, right? And it's allowed you to take unequal conference strength and try and balance that in a way that's not two ADs sitting in there trying to debate each other. Mm-hmm. You have some hard data to back that up that's unemotional, that yes. just says, listen. Because, again, there isn't anybody debating that the Big 12 is the best league, right? Right. I mean, it's been, right. an, it's been an, a, a, an absolute accepted fact since about November. Yes. And no one's wavered off that. Correct. So West Virginia has just been continuing to prod right along in this. Now, this will start to change the narrative a little bit. you got to see how the conference does in postseason, which, again, is an unfair narrative in a one-game situation when anybody can win. But there is no doubt those numbers in this, this league helped West Virginia immeasurably this season. Just really quick, here's the teams West Virginia's ranked above. <laughs> above. Kentucky, from North Carolina. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Utah State, Memphis, Arkansas, Duke. Might have heard of them. Maryland, Iowa State, Kansas State, Texas A&M, Florida Atlantic, TCU, Kentucky, Auburn, Indiana, Boise State, Michigan State, Illinois, Virginia. Until you get to Rutgers, who was left out at 35. So they're the one. Remember I talked earlier this year, my fear for West Virginia after that start yes. was they were going to be the highest ranked Ken Palm team that was in white. And you look down, and when you look at Ken Palm Hoppy, it's all red for NCAA tournament. And there's always that poor buddy that's the white, <laughs> that's the highest ranked and left out. Rutgers. Rutgers. <laughs> Hello, Rutgers. It's not West Virginia. Enjoy the NIT. Rutgers, get out. Don't care. Don't You're apologize. Good. Not sorry. Don't feel bad for them. No one helps you up when you're down in this business, right. Hoppy. So That's they're right. down. They're on their back. They're kicking. They can't get in the NCAA tournament. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> one of the great signs of a good All business is if that business continues to have the same clients that they began their business with. Comax Business Systems is such a business. They have morphed from your local copier guy and now can handle every thing, single thing as far as a business goes. Equipment needs, your business data, your IT security, and yes, even your phone system. From one line to a thousand lines, Comax is ready for you. Just call them. We'll give you an absolutely free price quote if it's that time for you. What works? Purchase it, lease it, rent it, all options available. From one to a thousand. It's Comax Business Systems. Visit the folks at ComaxWV.com. So before West Virginia played Kansas, the game before the Mountaineers last week at the tournament was Iowa State Baylor. So we had our broadcast spot all set up. So I said, I'm going to go early. I'm going to watch Iowa State Baylor because I don't get to watch games in person, right? Because you watch when you announce a game and you watch a game, it's entirely two different things. So I go, I'm fired up. Mm-hmm. So I sit down, got my boys over there, and all by myself, front row, courtside, and it's a good game. I mean, it is a good game. So watching, watching, get a get a tap on the shoulder during mm-hmm. the timeout. I look over, second in charge of the Big Twelve. Bob Berta. Oh, good. Hello, Bob. Oh, okay. Hello, Bob. Take a seat. So I gave I, I gave Bob the spin, and I went, here comes a heater. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been CCing him on these emails about the central time zone. Yeah. He said, hey, man, how are you doing? I said, good, Bob. How are you doing? <laughs> he said, listen, you ready? Just want to thank you. He started off with, just want to thank you. Providing a service. For staying on top of this. He says, we're going to get this taken care of, and we're going to get it fixed. And I said, Bob, all good, man. But you know, you know, it kind of gave him the, as you know, with three time <laughs> zones coming into play and potentially four time zones, who knows, in the future. He said, no, man. He said, you're absolutely right. I appreciate it. He went so that was, it, that was it? That was it? He didn't give any time frame. He just said, it's going to be fixed. You got, a he, you got an oral you know, promise. It's going to be well, fixed. Well, he had already emailed me and said he was going to get it taken care of. They're going to come out with a new website. I mean, I, I don't. I don't doubt they're going to get it fixed. I know they'll get there. I will still say, it shouldn't have taken this kind of public relations effort, and it shouldn't have taken until these other schools get in. BYU should be thankful for the work of the three guys, listeners, and this podcast. Yeah. They should be thankful. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand why. I mean, when you're putting together the information, hit tab and put in the Eastern Time. I mean, what? What is? 
I mean, is there something else that we're missing? What am I missing? I I, I what am I missing? I don't know what we're missing either because when ESPN, a national entity, last I checked, even though I know you have some questions about whether it's national or regional, a national <laughs> entity in ESPN, when they were putting the brackets out there, Hoppy, they'd put the Big 12 bracket up and yeah. they would say the Wednesday night games, West Virginia against Texas Tech, 7 p.m. Eastern. I mean, everybody in well, the, everybody in the but, world... But, does Easter. By the way, what time? Let me ask you this: When CBS announced the game time yeah, yeah. Right. for West Virginia yeah. and Maryland, right. what did they say? Twelve fifteen Eastern time. I'm sorry, the game Central time. Yeah, right. It? It's being held in a central location. But they announced they it as Eastern time. <clears throat> you don't have to tell me. I grew up in the Midwest time zone, having to translate all the time. I know how it works. I don't need somebody to tell me what other people are doing. I know how it works. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> I didn't know it was 11.15 until I checked to see that Birmingham was in the Central Time. I thought it was pretty far east from the Central Time. Yeah. <laughs> we would welcome them to the East. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Textual Healing. <laughs> they want to have a realignment. <laughs> yeah. I bet they're barely in. Let me check. As this uh, podcast has grown, we continue to reach out and touch different uh, areas. And the more we uh, the more we grow, the the more enjoyable it's becoming because we're finding these uh, wild um, tie-ins and stories and things like that, literally all over the world. Right? We had that last deal, last show from India, but here's one in state. Mm. This is from Scott Dixon. My family is from Lewisburg. Family of three WVU grads, one Marshall grad who now identifies as a diehard Mountaineer fan. Sports in our family have been a favorite pastime, which has led my brother to a coaching career. Therein lies the purpose of my email. Check this out, guys. Neil Dixon. He is an assistant at UNC Asheville. Mm -hmm. Won the Big South regular season. They're in the big dance. Going to take on the two-seed UCLA. So congratulations to Neil Dixon, who's on the staff there at UNC Asheville. Thanks for being here. That is correct. Pioneer. Was received a text last night from someone that was uh, college buddies with Neil here at WVU. Awesome. Here we go. Ready for a poem? Mm -hmm. This is from the Bearded Ear, an NCAA tournament limerick. We made it as a nine. To Birmingham we depart. A matchup with the tide could break our heart. But first things first, let's topple the Terps. Survive in advance to silent the, silence the chirps. Good thing no one panicked with our 0-5 start. <laughs> Sound by the bearded ear. Well done. Well, I think there was a lot of panic, actually. Well done. Met a gentleman earlier today, Fred, there in Fairmont, out at OC Clus, big listener, and uh, said, uh, you guys, he said, yeah, I, got, I got these group of Navy guys that are based in Virginia. Have not missed an episode. So shout out How about that to our gentleman in service to our nation, Blake Morton, three guys listener in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thanks so much for listening. Mothership. Texter, I need some help. I need you to help me understand how I should feel. When a school is involved in an ugly situation or a scandal, I have major negative feelings for them that I never can shake. Examples would be Baylor. And of all the crimes toward women that seem to not be taken seriously, if not covered up at Penn State, no explanation needed. I'm feeling this way toward Alabama and Brandon Miller. I know that he has not been charged yet. However, the way the program has handled this current ugly situation is disgusting to me. When I discuss this with friends, I seem to be the outlier and think Miller shouldn't be playing at the least. I honestly didn't think shutting the program down until the situation was resolved was off of the table. Am I being too harsh? You all have been involved with college sports for decades, and I truly do value your perspective, signed by Pete and Pensboro. Oppie, you're the voice of reason on such things. Well, I, you know, in, in, in fairness, I, I mean, I've followed it. I know that he's the guy that got the gun, brought the gun in. Uh, he is not, he was not charged with anything, but boy, you, you are connected to a murder. You're connected tangentially to a murder, and uh, it seems like that. Um, it, 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 it seems like that 
they're trying to find a way to let him play as opposed to saying, you know, you're involved in something really, really serious here. How can you continue to be associated with this team? I mean, he was associated with what happened, even if you weren't charged. A very serious matter. I, I, I am at a bit of a loss to understand why he's still playing. Do you care to opine, Senator? Well, it's, uh, I mean, that th- this is a hard stance to be on the other side to defend the situation they're in. And you're right, Hoppy. The, the only thing I can come to if you're Alabama is that what's it often come down to in these situations? Money. And you've got a guy here that's going to be a top five-ish NBA pick, and you've got no evidence against him. The police aren't charging him with anything. The police haven't made a move to go after him at all, you suspend him, you're going to you're going to get sued from the other side. Now, maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you accept that as the school, that's part of it, but you are you are going to bring a lawsuit from the other side upon yourself. My thought is if this would have happened 10 or 15 years ago, he's gone. I think this has all changed. Not necessarily for the better. Certainly not for the better. It has changed. The situations involving these types of things have changed. He would have been done 15 years ago. Yeah, but for the reason I just stated, you yeah. wouldn't have gotten sued 15 years ago. That right. would have just been violation right. of team rules, and you're out, and it would have gone away. Now that's not going to be the case. I don't, you know, now again, it's, that's it's, something uh, I'm not in. Uh, clearly, not in the room with the people at Alabama making this decision. All we can go on is what's been reported. But that would be my my guess is it's a it's a hedge against getting sued. Yeah, I mean, again, I I, I only know what I've read. I, I don't know all the facts, but it seems. You know, you see all the time, like, the, I, don't, I don't know what the kid from um, Texas Tech said, right? To Iowa State. Iowa State. But I don't know the kid from Iowa State said, but he said something that got him kicked off the team. I don't know what that, we don't know what that was. Well, this guy hasn't been charged, but he, he was not, not criminally an accessory, but again, uh, he, was, he was there and involved to a degree. I, I it's, Greg in Catlettsburg, let's pause. Take a moment for the here and now. The men are in. Coach P and the women, how excited I was for her back when the season began, are in. Baseball team are rolling. Rifle team and what they've achieved. After the disappointment of football, then the as well as expected start to basketball, then the kick to the sack starting of conference playing basketball, things were very dour. So much so as some were calling for hugs to step down. I was certainly not Mr. Optimistic, but again, just pause in this moment from then to now. Maybe not as great as it has been. Definitely not as bad as it could be. Thank you, gentlemen, for helping us through and keeping us looking forward. Have a blessed day. Some perspective there. Um, hey, guys, what's the over-under on percentage of Mountaineer fans that simply cannot bring themselves to pick against the world champion Mountaineers? Being an irrational fan is why I could never go into sports betting. See his bracket right there? That's West Virginia all the way through. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, Forrest in Morgantown. Gentlemen, two quicks. If a three-guy stern wheel extravaganza happens without the inclusion of a lyrically masterful C, or in this case, River Shanty, I will be very disappointed. <laughs> what? Say so, it again. Read that again. So if they want, if he says, if we're going to do a stern wheel event this summer, we need to have a C Shanty. You've heard those songs, right? You've heard of C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I agree Discussed with you. Discussed on this show before, I believe. Yes. Please note my interaction with a colleague last week on a property purchase we're working on. I feel like I described my actions concisely. However, maybe I need to bring him in the loop on proper work terminology, keep up the good work. So he said, the guy shows this email here, and it says, what are you doing on so-and-so? He says, efforting. Uh-huh, perfect. And, efforting. and the guy writes back, efforting, with about five or six uh Question marks. Anyway, thank you for doing that, Forrest. We, uh, By the way, I used that it. efforting with uh, at home. Yeah, how'd that go? Because <laughs> it's something. <laughs> Didn't go well? Something came up at the Kirchhoff household, and I said, efforting. <laughs> and got it like, what? Yeah, perfect. So, efforting. You just got to keep so coming what, back so what, to what, it. What's that mean? I said, efforting. I said, this comes from three, I get explanation from listen. three guys, and Brad said efforting, which just means a shorthand for you know, I'm working on it. Glad you and didn't don't bring me, up. me. I'm working on it. That's it. And she signed off on it. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a great word. Very glad economical. You, glad, she, glad you didn't bring me in on that because she would have went against it. No, she would. But she all. But she also said, "Is, is Brad a little thorny? He's a little hard to get along with." I said, "Yeah, he, you know, listen. Is it my what? Thorny and hard to get along with? Not, not. Maybe those she has her listened. words. It was just that you were. 
you're you're how Brad Tony, what would you say? Brad is <laughs> Go ahead, Oppie, you take care of it. Um yeah, what are you saying over yeah, here? Yeah, what are you saying? Soft as a cactus? Mm, you know, kinda he could he can be no nonsense. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's kinda like you, distant and aloof. No, I wouldn't say he's distant and aloof, but I'm but I'm saying no, when he's he not says distant. when he says efforting, it's also <laughs> not like I it's I'm working on it. Don't bother me. I'm cutting off this conversation. Oh yeah, he's great at that. He can like you know like on your TV you can press mute. That's he can mute in any setting. <laughs> in any setting he can absolutely mute. You like Can't hear you. See, he just he did it. Muted. Randy in State College wanted to congratulate the women's team. I only watched them a few times. Definitely got better as the season went along. Coach P, the real deal. Future looks bright, but and this is a big but. How do you not foul at the end of the game when you have one to give? I don't understand. In the post game, she clearly said she did not want to foul in that situation. What are you calling in that situation? I love the show. Did she have one to give? She, she had one to give. Ooh. She'll be on the uh, sport line tonight. Your public affairs sports program? Yeah, we're doing it tonight. And uh, I'm going to ask her because obviously it's a philosophical thing for her. And I'd love to know. You know, I'm not questioning. I just want like, what's your, what's your thinking on that? Uh, texter, three guys, Kent in Charleston via Morgantown. I had to laugh on the Refuse to Lose episode when you all discussed the flying WV being mistaken for Wonder Woman. I think you'll appreciate that. I'm out on a walk with my wife, three-year-old daughter. Woman was running in the opposite direction wearing a shirt with the Wonder Woman logo on the front. Our daughter, three years old, exclaims, Mommy, Daddy, it's West Virginia. <laughs> While we really wanted to correct her, we didn't. My wife and I just looked at each other and only smiled at we're doing the right thing in raising this child. Yep. <laughs> Texter, interestingly, all of all the many years of watching Mountaineer basketball, the 2022-23 reg season, the officiating has been the least noticeable in memory. My digital WV fandom barometer, barometer device has measured its lowest rating in 20 years with regard to fan concern for in-game adjudication. You'd think with this season so many close losses, there would have been more outrage over game-changing foul calls. Maybe that's because there weren't any game-changing <laughs> calls. Dare I say the officiating has improved, or is this some random stroke of luck? And that's as close as a Mountaineer fan will get to saying we got a whistle. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Hey, three guys, just an observation. I remember when this podcast first started. Oh, here comes a heater. It was really just about WVU sports and nothing else. Then came the side issues, like the Sam Marzano tomatoes, pencil sharpeners, highlighters, astronaut aspirations, even the Mothman. All still great content that is until lately. Uh -oh. Tony has occasionally attacked people, yes, professions, yes. and even countries. Lately, however, it has become an every live show event, <laughs> so much so that it has now rubbed off on the hermit who started fairy shamming. Looks like spreads is the only diplomatic holdout. Don't go to the dark side with those two spreads. In all seriousness, though, keep up the great work, giving fans out twice weekly therapy, Jim in Preston County. <laughs> you did fairy shame. What did I do? Fairy shamed. When you're talking about that guy said he went like a bunch of different fairies yeah, in order yeah. to get to that place. Well, you go like, man, ah, some fairies. It's just a little jot across, you know, it's a couple hundred yards. So you fairy shamed. I mean, those ferry the guys that operate the ferry that goes a quarter of a mile is just as important as the ferry guy that <laughs> All goes. All I was by. saying was that some ferries, if you're taking a lot of ferries, they're probably some of them are short. It's not like you're going across Lake Michigan. Ferry shamer. Texter. Stop shaming. Ferry shaming, food shaming, coffee shaming, both of you. Just stop it. <clears throat> do what they're going to do. Leave them alone. I may have breaking news, Texter says. Well, we all recognize the dean's frequent absences and accept and are completely attributable to his duties covering the various comings and goings of our state's ruling class. However, what if the hopster is also on occasion letting his freak flag fly and using the time away for a little extended excursion? Excuse me? Far-fetched, you say? Well, I'd have thought so too until my recent trip to St. Petersburg, Florida to see the amazing Tom Petty tribute band, The Petty Experience. Huh? Imagine my surprise when I gazed across the stage and just beyond it, jamming his arse off to the band, stood... The dean himself, what? or look at look at the picture, what? or an amazing <laughs> facsimile <laughs> there. <laughs> that is you. Even the mannerisms were spot on. Oh my gosh! No could, wonder you haven't been here. Could it's be my... the could be the gummy samples were kicking in, but he was twice as animated when Last Dance with Mary Jane closed the show. Dude, that's uh, my doppelganger right there. 
Kirchville jamming away at the Tom Petty in Florida. When That's my, where you've been. If my father was ever in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Son- <laughs> Signed by uh, this is Ken. Can you zoom in on that? That's no, we can't zoom in on that. <laughs> Can you, can you zoom in on that lap? We just got the kid to get the right slides up. We're not zooming in on anything. Yeah, lucky there's not a mini horse on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, that, that's a that, good one. That's, pretty, da- like that's pretty damn good. That's a little a more good hair. One. A little more hair. That's signed by Ken and Ridgely. But same I'm, hair lot. I mean, that's, yeah. that's really good. Similar glasses. Oh, my gosh. Ken in Ridgely, when he's not in St. Petersburg, I sold my land in Mineral County to buy the condo. Awesome. That's a good that's a good one. That's a little spooky, isn't it? <laughs> Friggin' awesome. <laughs> P1 Jason and Mobile here. I thought it, I thought I heard it was funny when you guys mentioned Wonder Woman. From a fellow Alabamian in the last episode. I've coached youth softball for years, multiple girls. Ask me. If my WV hat stood for Wonder Woman, and I've also had them ask if it stood for Whataburger, the southern fast food chain. Since I'll never row tide or war eagle, these teenage girls have a bit of fun with me at times, poking fun, but I don't mind. This is wild. I, I, I'm being serious. I've, I've never once heard that. Me either. Until this podcast. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, hey, three guys, listening to Monday's episode, noted your question, if we had ever had a senior night, like this year's, my mind immediately went to 2000.6 when our starting lineup was all seniors. I found the box score for that senior night. 67-62 upset over number eight pit. All but four points were scored by the seniors. Not only did this year's team score 22 more points, all but three points of that win were scored by the seniors. So it might be safe to say we've never had a senior night like that. Texter. Reporting live from the Charleston <laughs> Town Center Mall food court, you can imagine Uh-oh. my surprise when it initially appeared that Hoppy was stepping up to place his own lunch order at Fresh Wraps and Grill. Our boy quickly regressed to the mean, however, leaving his wife to complete the ordering process and securing the most secluded table available. True. I would have included photographic evidence of the spotting of Hoppy in public, but I felt snapping a picture from behind the shrubs was a tad too creepy. Well, the guy did it in Florida. Signed by Chase in Charleston. <laughs> by so the what way, happened? You I, stepped I, up I to order. Report. You wanted to see it. You wanted to whisper in Karen's ear. Then you, ba- then you bailed and went and got the table. We we both went up, looked. It was, you know, the order was, uh, you know, it was a little bit confusing because it had multiple things. You had to get in the wrap and stuff like that. And I just said, you got it. I'll get the table. And I went back and I was, I think I was reading something. I didn't, but she took care of it. I came stunner. back up and helped with the drinks. Yeah, stunner. <laughs> First time, first time texter, Jeremy from the Forgotten County of McDowell. I'd like to invite you three to come make a visit to the free state of McDowell, as it is often called. We don't have a whole lot of off to offer our politicians from days ago. They wait a second. We don't have a whole lot to offer due to politicians from days ago pillaging us like pirates with treasure chests. But we do have plenty of trails to ride ATVs and side by sides, and we've got great people. Would be honored if three guys. Could make an appearance in some fashion. Tony, maybe you could even do play-by-play of our biggest county sporting event, the annual football game between Mount View and Riverview. As a Board of Education employee, I can see about setting that up if interested. Also, PSS, the great Mountaineer legend Pat White paid us a visit in 2015 when he was promoting his sports drink, Rehydrate, and I had the honor to meet him and was, in his words, the first ever person to ask him to sign his son. He was not even a year old. He was wearing a baby WV football jersey that is now framed in this room. Love the show. So Pat signed his little baby's shirt. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> Charlie in Princeton, I've heard the Wonder Woman reference once again on 40, 447 and 448. This happened to me several years ago. A group from corporate comes to pay a visit to the local office of the company. I'm working for at the time. Whenever we had visitors, I always represent the flying WV. One of the directors looked at the logo on, on my polo shirt and said, Wow, you really love Wonder Woman? To further relate to episode 448, he was from India. I guess he missed the country roads experience that may be <laughs> had on the subcontinent, signed by Charlie in Princeton. Sure. Texter. Stunner. Thought you might like to have this photo of the original Mothman costume. A what? This is not a fraud. The Mothman's youngest son is my best friend. <clears throat> huh? Told you. There it is. That's what he wore. That was it. 
He wore that. That's what he wore. What's going on? See, now music's going off randomly in the studio. Things are happening. No. That's, that's, that was the suit, Hoppy. It's my phone. What? Uh, Not me, what? That, um... I can't say anything because I would said I was efforting research and I haven't done it. Tell so you what, I got nothing. It's a good thing you're not. I tell you what, it's a good thing you're not a cardiac surgeon the way that you've been efforting this because a patient would be. I think <clears> you're <throat> fine. Just let it lie for God's sakes. Let the Mothman thing lie. <clears throat> Texter, dear three guys, I want to let Stay you know how influential your little clown program is, even on a subconscious <laughs> level. Recent team leader meeting, I was made aware of a deadline <laughs> approaching that needed my attention. Without a thought, I found myself saying, efforty. Yeah. It was like an out-of-body right. experience. And before I knew it, was met with three blank stares in my direction, except uh -huh. for one person who's a regular Three Guys listener, Taze Valley State of Mind Matt, who knew exactly where that came from. After the meeting, we chuckled and were met with even more puzzled looks. I then proceeded to say, okay, let's go crush some pizza. They say, imitation is the best form of flattery, so thank you. Seriously, thanks for all that you do. Right. Yeah. Andy from Taze Valley, Mineral Rights in Tyler County, Hunt and Land in Wetzel County, out near 100. It, it just prevents the meeting from dragging when they, when they ask you, right? You don't, need, you don't need a long word. They're going to give you a long, wordy question to it, right? right? right the lead right. up. Yeah. You don't need to respond with a long, wordy answer, and everybody else is looking at you like, can we just move on? I've got yeah, things yeah. to do. Why are you going through it? Just say efforting, and we all move on. Plus, I think when you really feel confident, job, you, you add it in the way Brad would do it. So, Brad, ask me the question. This is how you would respond. Where are we on the Mothman No, research? where are we on the Sternwheel Regatta event? Efforting. <laughs> right. You don't look up. You don't have to acknowledge. You don't do anything other than keep doing yeah, what you're doing. Like work, I'm looking at other things. Efforting. Efforting. Enough. Yeah. Go to your next bullet point. Let's get yeah. the meeting moving here. Exactly. Like we do on this show. Right. Rarely. Right. Just ask. <laughs> efforting. Move on. Where are we on merchandise? We're efforting. Next. Well, if you've been looking for the premier pontoon dealer in the state of West Virginia, it is Lou Wendell Marine Sales, family-owned, four decades, recognized as the state's experts when it comes to pontoon boating and the biggest dealer in the state. They feature the Avalon pontoon boats, considered one of the best brands in America, and they're manufactured right here in America. Check them out, Lou Wendell Marine Sales. What do they do? They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Sunburn not included. Check it out. <clears throat> Texter. I'm starting to think there's some ancient migratory connection between India and West Virginia. When I was there on a study abroad trip, I was met with the singing of country roads when they noticed the flying WV on my hat. So on our way back, we had a seven-hour layover in Paris. So we drive into Paris to see the Eiffel Tower. That's where the uh, young lady was wearing the uh, three guys hat yeah. in the recent One episode. Of the prototypes. We stopped at a bakery, sat at a bar facing a large glass window. Someone walks by the window, starts waving frantically to catch my attention, pointing at the flying WV on my shirt and mouthing, I went there too. <laughs> As you say, always a connection. Always. Awesome. Nate in Elkview. Unless they somehow mistakenly thought it was Wonder Woman. As we're coming <laughs> That's to right. realize. Yeah. Three guys, George and Mingo County. I don't know how to say this, but I think you guys should take it easy on Hoppy. On a recent dinner date with my wife to a local hibachi place, I calmly sat there. She ordered the Peking for two like I had no voice. <laughs> it was quite calming to know I'd be well-fed and not have to interact with anyone. Yeah. So, Hoppy, I'm with you. Thank you, brother. Why order if we have wives that will do it? LOL. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. <clears throat> uh, Texter, this is a good one. Scope spreads. Listening to 448. Refused to lose on my way into the office today. I heard the gentleman's story about country roads being sung in India. How about this one? I was just in India last month for business, staying in Delhi, but traveled to Agar to visit the Taj Agra. Mahal. Excuse me? Agra. I was wondering about that. What is it, Hoppy? Agra. I don't know why it's spelled A-G-A-R. It's Agra. So it's spelled A-G-A-R, but it's pronounced Agra. Well, I'll double check the spelling. That's how you pronounce I'll it. I'll go Agra. with you. You ever been to Taj Mahal? I have not, not been to India. Uh, went to Agra to visit the Taj Mahal, one of our days off. Incredible experience to see one of the seven wonders of the world. The Taj is absolutely stunning. But more stunning yeah, to me yeah, was that... that is. Yeah, I know. I'm the one that sent the picture. Yeah, but more stunning to me was... was <laughs> As if it just appeared. <laughs> hey, oh, look! There, there it is! is. Hey, look, there's... He's, yeah. he's at the Taj Mahal. Yeah, I saw it last night about 10 o'clock. <laughs> but anyway... 
when I was sending all these stupid pictures to Taylor. <laughs> but anyway, more stunning to me was that I saw as we walked up the road. This is really good. Outside the grounds. Outside the grounds of the Taj Mahal, one of the wonders of the world. On that road, dozens of street vendors <laughs> selling all types of souvenirs. Had a tour guide for our group, so we weren't going to stop to shop. But I'm walking. I'm stopped in my tracks when I see a hat that caught my eye. Here we are in India thousands of miles from Morgantown. And what hat do I see displayed? You guess it, hanging proudly amongst the India hats is a lone green. Look at that hat up top to the right. It's one, two, three, four to the left from the, it's a green hat. Oh, it's got the go. flying we're, WV. We're hat. getting audited on this because let me tell you right now, that is not officially licensed. No. Keep going. <laughs> you don't think? Here comes no. an audit. So there's a flying WV hat in the Taj Mahal. Illegal. And poor Nikki Goodnow, she does the uh, marketing over there, the uh, the mark. She's going to have a stroke. She's stroking out. Yeah. Now she's got to take a flight she, to the Taj Mahal correct. and chase the guy around the, the around the, the, the vendor area. Correct, there. and do the currency transfer, turn that into the university. That'll be a whole thing. Anyway. Are you, su are you suggesting that in some countries there is product <laughs> that is not officially licensed? Yeah. 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 Is, it, yeah. is that possible? Not suggesting, saying. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> As the gentleman says, felt great seeing the flying WV in a foreign land. There's always a West Virginia side note. I did download an episode while I was in India to help increase oh, your demographic good. numbers. That was very good. I'm headed back to the Mountain State this weekend for a wedding and look forward to finding another Kerchival among my travels. Shout out to Billy and Kendall in Clarksburg on their nuptials. Keep up the great work, Greg in Baltimore. Congratulations. He better hurry because based on what I saw this weekend, there won't be any Kerchival left. Crazy. What are you saying? We'll get, I'll get to that in a minute. Can't get it. Okay. Can't get it. Three guys. Heavy consumption of it this weekend. Where I P1 was. listener texter Mitch from Buchanan. Topic of your beer cruise. I intended a beer cruise at Stonewall Lake a few years back. They got a double-decker pontoon that they host these events on. They go way out on the lake, and you get to meet with the beer proprietors and discuss the beer while partaking and enjoying the company and views. There we go. This would help you avoid the potential state line issues. Stonewall is a fairly centrally located within the state, making it closer for the most people overall. Not to mention, you got lodging right there for afterward, plus the TJ Muskie's Bar and Grill, a great location for post-boating events. Totally think this is something that should be efforted. Shoot, maybe we even get some local musicians to play out that patio afterward. It'd be a great time for all. Anyways, thanks for always, and thanks great show. That's a good suggestion. So there's an option there. Hey, real quick, yeah. speaking of local mu mu musicians, did you know this? Rodney Rice out with a new single, new did, music video? Didn't know that. Would be the son of Lori, Lori Rice. Yeah. Over at the uh, yeah. football complex there. 25 plus years, football administrator yeah. over Son there. Son Rodney. Sure. Musician, big fan of the show. Remember when, Hello, he was Rodney, just, for remember when he was just a little guy. Yeah, now he's out there making music videos. Awesome. Good for him. Congratulations to Rodney. Good for him. Uh, texter, Tony keeps claiming that there's no evidence of officiating being rigged against the Mountaineers. That can't be possible. Let me explain. I'll start with the obvious that we all know to be true every offseason. That WVU should win the national championship every year in football and in basketball. There's simply not a single team that's better than ours. But they don't, which means one of two things must be happening. Either the good Lord above is against the Mountaineers, or those dirty refs are cheating us every season. Well, when I look up at the sky, I see gold, sun, and blue sky, so that puts the first preposterous idea to bed. Leaving the quote-unquote conspiracy theory is the only remaining reasonable explanation that West Virginia does not currently have 132 championships in football and doesn't have 117 more in basketball. Good point. Thank you. Solid. Texter, I work in the TV film production business. As a result, I spend a lot of time on various sets in Los Angeles. There have been at least a half a dozen times when wearing my WVU toboggan Someone has asked me if I had worked on a Wonder Woman movie. What is this with this Wonder <laughs> this Woman thing? This is incredible. Thing? I then have to explain that WVU is the flagship institution of West Virginia, which is a state in the eastern time zone with its <laughs> yeah. own flag and everything. Good For point. me, Wonder Woman has now become the new, I got a cousin in Richmond. It's a fair point. Looking for land in either Fayette or Greenbrier County, signed by DB. What's, Get what? with it. Hey, DB, text me back. I want to know what movies and, and stuff you do in, uh, in California there in Hollywood. I'd like to know what kind of shows you're working on. I mean, it does look somewhat similar. Somewhat similar. <laughs> similar. Somewhat. <laughs> Texter, you know the Big 12 was not in charge of making the infographic when Eastern time is the only time noted. Longtime listener, first-time texter. Cheers what from now? Nick V. That's what I was referring Beckley. to. 
That's what I was referring to. Look at the bottom on the ESPN graphic. The championship game is Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern, even though the game was being held in the central time. That, that was my point. ESPN, oh, yeah. That's a disease. Yeah. <clears throat> Texter, I just got back from picking up the new batch of Kerchival. Naturally met Bill, the owner of Chestnut Brew Works, at the famous Flatwoods Go Mart. <laughs> that was the, that's where the mule dropped it. Yep. Got a fly rod Slim Jim and a Reese's egg for the drive back to Beckley. Perfect. All set. <laughs> Just a fantastic. Fly rod Slim Jim, Reese's egg. Checks all the boxes. That's about all you need. Just a great evening all around. As I'm typing this, the Mountaineers dispose of the Red Raiders in the opening round of the Big 12. I've got Kerchival to tap tomorrow for our thirsty patrons at Foster's and Beckley. Here's hoping for another win tomorrow. See, look at him. Here's hoping for another oh. <laughs> Look at the picture, too. He's got, got the, it framed in the He's got the two sixtals there. Gomart's become the drop. It's truly a great <laughs> night to be a Mountaineer. Thanks again for keeping us informed, up to date, and entertained. Looking forward to the next Make episode, but not until we win the, the drop big there. tour. So that's, that's signed awesome. by Matthew. That's Matthews runs Fosters there. But he had a fly rod slim jeans. He's got Reese's in his hands. He's got two Kerchival sixtals Perfect, there. Well, well covered. done. Covered them all. Well done. Now, will that stay cold like that? Well, I don't think it has to stay cold until you make it cold. Does well, that make sense? Like I think once they take it out, I think relatively you can keep it out for a little bit, then put it back in there. Yeah, I think so. That's so. not cold now? This, sh this truck's not refrigerated. Hmm, okay. No, because they haul beer every day. Like, think about the Budweiser right. guy. Budweiser's guy's driving all over the place. He's got kegs of beer in his truck. It's not a refrigerated truck, so you don't. it must not have to be because it's it's sealed, right? It's tap, it, it's sealed in that keg, okay. so I don't, I don't think you're getting any air in that thing, so it's probably fine. Okay. Someone will, I, Now we're going to get 77 texts from yeah. brewers. Yeah. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> Apologize about that. Don't forget, one of our sponsors, GoMart, has teamed up with Reese's to give away some big prizes during the Marty's Extravaganza. Love this. Marty's their their uh, their uh, mascot. He's teamed up with Reese's to give away some big prizes during this Extravaganza. Tickets to see Morgan Wallen in concert. All you have to do is go to GoMart, search for the QR code, which is located in the. So walk into a GoMart. They're going to yeah. have a QR code in the store. Pretty simple. Now get your phone. Put it in picture mode, photo mode. How will struggle with this? Mode. Put your camera on. Scan the code. Follow the directions to be entered. But hurry. Marty's extravaganza ends 30 April. For more information, visit gomart.com. Like it. Good. <clears throat> Texter. This guy wants to know, they mentioned when we played Texas Tech that Emmett had a career best 28 against Texas Tech in the NCAA tournament. My question is for Stats. Do you think a power, a player in Power 5 has dropped 28 against a Final Four team and then not been a lottery pick? Mm. Absolutely. Guys, go, Some guys go crazy some nights. Right? Love the show. I'm an accountant, not a CPA, but I own a tax business. And I will never complain about being busy during tax season because I love the money. <laughs> Appreciate That's candor. what I would think, too. Wasn't offended by you either, no. which was nice. Texter. The discussion about the flying WV being mistaken for Wonder Woman's logo reminded me of another logo that's often confused for the flying WV, the old WWF wrestling logo. Now, that's Wonder Woman there. That's Wonder Woman. Oh, well, that's Wonder Woman. That's, yeah, that's uh, Taylor WB. just took two swings, and it's 0-2. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman says, I had a toboggan, also known as a winter hat for non-West Virginians, <laughs> good, good. With the WWF logo as a young kid in the late 80s, early 90s, I'm almost 100% certain the blue hat with a gold WWF logo was purchased as a WVU gift. <laughs> That's good. Let's go. Not Charlie in Charleston. Texter. Hey, guys. West Virginia looked like they didn't quite have their legs against Kansas, but more importantly, based on Brad's and Tony's lack of knowledge on West Virginia river boundaries, the state should require that one must pass a seventh grade West Virginia <laughs> studies course before receiving state citizenship. Harsh. Cheers, Sean in Washington State. I mean, I get it, but that seemed like a pretty specific down in the weeds question there. <laughs> halfway through the river there, everybody knows low water. We had low water marks halfway through. Goodness gracious. You got to know what the water mark uh, is. You don't know the low water mark there in Marietta? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Get out of the state. <laughs> So you're not from here. I mean, low watermark. <laughs> I mean, I've heard people. I've heard a lot I've heard, of things. I have not. Hey, man. The low watermark of 1873. <laughs> Who doesn't know that? I mean, what, people are me? taking shots at us. And how many, how many times, like back in the day when we were working over at the other building and it was a snowstorm, people would call up and say, is there school today in Monongahela County? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going like, wait a second. It's Monongahela County. 
you live here. It's not Monongahela County. So I think us not knowing the 1873 low water <laughs> mark is. Marietta? Yeah. Nice. Tough crowd. Oh, here, here's one. I'm going to take a couple breaths. <clears throat> Danny in Chesterfield. Spreads, don't take this the wrong way. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Here comes a heater. I'm coming respect. out of the closet today. Here we go. Nearly yeah. every spring past few years, I've spotted a creature in the woods behind my domicile. <laughs> Here we go. My heart pounded in fright as I efforted to calm myself. At the time of this writing, I am not sure if it was the result of efforting or if I was placed under a spell, but in about the same time it takes to complete the last two minutes of a Mountaineer basketball game, my demeanor had improved dramatically. Normally, my efforting does not produce positive results, so I'm chalking this one up for the creature. Words cannot describe what followed. So this creature comes out to him. The creature slipped from behind the branches and walked in my direction. Wait a minute, look at this. It is impossible to describe how mesmerized I felt. In an effort to survive, I reverted to a normal survival technique. I used the old Bud Light phrase and said, What's up? <laughs> the creature replied, Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. That West Virginia connection took over as we sat on a down long and a cold evening air. It is a talk I cannot forget. I know there is at least one doubt around the three guys, but I must share what I have learned. He told me who he is and all about his travels. You won't believe why he was in Chesterfield. Find out maybe next episode. Finally, he's a longtime listener of three guys. He likes Scopes and suggests that Scopes be a safe hunter and always make sure he is shooting the sleeping boar. He had a few <laughs> choice words and some numbers for spreads. To Hoppy, the truth is out there. On a side note, Nathan... The CPA in Chesterfield, that's my nephew. That, that's, that was the kid walking into the baseball park with the adding machine under oh, yeah, his arm. Yeah. Yeah, he said, we had a great time at the VCU baseball game. His wife asked that I let you all know that he was unable to find a power rece receptacle <laughs> during the VCU game. <laughs> so he was working at home Sunday, unable to make it to the Spiders game Sunday afternoon. Because he's busy, tax season. Yeah, he says on Facebook, if you're able to sign up, I'm organizing a food train to keep our CPAs nourished in these trying times. Search for each ship for CPAs. There it is. There it is, CPA. That was the guy, Hoppy. He went into the Mountaineer game. He didn't yep. want to miss the weekend. He's an accountant. Yep. So he just brought his adding machine with him into the stadium. Look at the adding machine. Got the just tape on the back. So what was going on in the woods? There was some. Yeah, what, what, what is that? What am I looking at? Well, that creature came up to him in his backyard, sat down, and he knew he was okay when that creature said, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. And then he told me, told him that he likes me. He's all right with Hoppy, but he's a little bit upset with Brad because Brad keeps questioning his legitimacy. He should be okay with me. I'm the only one of you clowns. You don't even believe in it. <clears throat> You're going to uncover it, and I'm just saying we shouldn't even be talking about it. I should be the one that is in favor. Texter. Not you two. Look who I bumped into. These guys were in Charleston, South Carolina, celebrating Zach Frazier and Doug Nestor's bachelor party. I bumped into them celebrating me and my wife's 23rd wedding anniversary. They made my day. No, they made my weekend. Let's go. There they are. There's Zach with this gentleman having his 23rd. The only question I have, go back to the, the, the group shot there, Taylor. So, I mean, you got Dougie Nestor and Garrett Green, and then on the other side, Grayson Malashevich, and then you got Zach, and then we've got this gentleman here who was celebrating his wedding. But can you see that spot on his hooded sweatshirt right in the middle? Like yeah. a big grease burnout. Like looks like he had like five wings dropped them all there simultaneously on the same spot. Potentially did. Yeah. Well, that'll happen. Yeah, it does. It happens. He said, please don't crush me on that spot on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got to go see fine looking Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Just busting you, buddy. Congratulations. And those guys are all great guys. Great guys. Hey, three guys, while eating at a Mexican restaurant in Cedar Rapids the other day, Cedar Rapids. I could have sworn I heard Iowa. spreads on stats being played over the public address. I then Shazam the song. I found out that it was actually All For You by Janet Jackson. Give it a listen from the 22nd mark to the 52nd mark. You'll hear the similarities. You think... Uh, our producer, well, probably does that, right, David? He samples. Yeah. He samples yeah, you music. Sample, you can sample it. Yeah. So textual healing was off of the great sexual healing from sure. Marvin Gaye, and apparently spreads on stats comes off of Janet Jackson's All For You. Okay. He's a sampler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about Jack with rabbit ears immediately uh, finding the song there in the Mexican restaurant? Jack, unbelievable. That's jumping Jack, Hoppy. Huh? That's our guy. Jack, who brings us the chocolate bars? Yeah, he's going to college in Iowa. The guy that's going to college in Iowa. Oh, okay. That comes in and visits us. Okay, got you it. remember, Jack. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Remember, he was at the event. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, at yeah, your yeah, event. Yes. I'm sorry. 
yeah. that I was there for a few minutes? <laughs> just, just a few. The one that you showed up late for when they were ready to do the toast? Yeah, that was the one. Thanks, I love the show, Jumpin' Jack, in Morgantown for spring break. So he'll be in oh, here soon. Home. Yeah. Uh, ben from Pittsburgh. Since Jimmy Bell will top off and tip off the NCAA tournament with no playing games, don't count as a part of the tournament. Yes, that's a shot at Pitt. He goes, the ball is tipped, and there's Jimmy. He's got great feet. <laughs> so that was a one shining moment. He says, yeah, I know it was pretty weak. Maybe I can get floor seats if Tony makes fun of it. <laughs> Texter. Also, why has no one included resident bracketologist to Eric Stevenson's list of roles at West Virginia? He was always aware where the world champion stood in relation to the bubble. That is true. Coach Stevenson yeah. was on that. Well, as a member of the staff, that's part of what you keep up with. Yeah. So no surprise. He would be a, uh, you know, in my absence, I think he'd be a good, he'd be a good, uh, good substitute guy. third person. Be excellent. Where are you going? I'm well, not he here shows always. up occasionally. I'm not going to be here Thursday. Neither am I. Are you? No, because well, no, you two aren't here, so I'm not going to show up by myself. <laughs> so this looks like tweet a... out all my information on the game. <laughs> this looks like unfortunately well, you can come in there in the studio, fire one up. You could fire one up by yourself. You got enough info. See if I have un uncover some good things. We'll we'll send out a uh, three three guys short, three guys short. So if things why don't we do this we'll we'll, again? We're operating on air, uh, not live, but just doing it on air. So if no um, one's listening. if we win, now people are going to get mad. When we win, um, maybe you can jump in here. I can jump you on the Skype, and we can do like a short. Maybe we'll see. Hey, what's uh? So not one before the game, Tony. You probably won't, Tony. Uh, Brad, make a pick. You got enough intel to make a pick. Uh, first game, West Virginia. Okay. Oh, is that where you're going? Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. I like when the center goes that way. No hesitation. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't hesitate at all. Okay. Hey Taylor, is there anything that we forgot? Cover? Yeah, Taylor. Taylor said no. Didn't forget anything. We have great no boxes <laughs> <laughs> through the wall. Oh, no, 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 no. We <laughs> did forget. We did forget. Time out. We, we, no, wait, wait, stop. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. We wanted to do. There's significant shouts out. Shout outs that are needed. All right. I'll begin. Or do you want to go in lottery order? I'll go, I'll give one. You give one. Did you already give yours. I already gave it, man. I think. So was out and about, Hoppy, a bunch this weekend. Yes. Met a gentleman, Patrick Gwills, in Clarksburg. Okay. We're eating at the Chick-fil-A there. <laughs> Very nice. Called out. <laughs> Mentioned you. Cobb Thank salad. You. you can get a Cobb salad at Chick-fil-A. Spicy yeah. chicken sandwich. Large fry. It was <laughs> packed, too. Traditional Shot. chicken. Peach milkshake. <laughs> Summer only seasonal. Get it now. Chicken nuggets. Eight count. Chick-fil-A Chick uh, had a lot of Chick-fil-A encounters. Major sponsor of the girls' and boys' high school basketball yes. tournaments. Chicken and tenders. they got a, they have a game. They have a contest <laughs> where the cows, a cow, one of the Chick-fil-A cows come out, and somebody puts a blindfold on and gets on their hands and knees and crawls around the court and tries to find the cow. Yeah. If they find the cow, they get a... A gift card. And the crowd is supposed crowd to assist supposed to, with the noise. Yeah. You're hot, cold. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, very good. Greenbrier County, Patrick was from. Made the drive up. Excellent. Good, good to see him. And ran into, I'm surprised we didn't get a text in the show, P1 texter Tommy Boy from Independence. Ooh, he's been a constant. He has. Great dude. Met he and his lovely daughter, Morgantown Mall. The third, the third location I was at. This is all in one day. Well, I had you, were, heavy, you were making the well, rounds. I'm not going back out for another month. I'm Spicy done. Spicy deluxe. Where were you? You were Chick Fil A in Clarksburg. Yeah. Then Morgantown Mall. Okay. Then to Varsity Club here in Morgantown. Wow, you were out a lot. Heavy, heavy Kirchhoff ordering. Oh, what really? do you mean by that? I mean heavy. How do you know that? Because I asked. I first asked the waitress. Hey, has anybody come in and order Kirchhoff? She goes, Yeah. In fact, two people in the back there are drinking it right now. Went back and I talked to them. They enjoyed it. And then a table right to my left as I was leaving, there were six, seven, five, somewhere in there. <laughs> Two. Adults. All of them drinking 40. Kirchhoff. I mean, it was like 90% of the people in the varsity club at the time. We were, there kind of, we were there early for dinner, late for lunch, kind of in that in-between. It's a good in tasting, it's a good it tasting beer. A good beer. Heavy Kirchhoff. They give a nice little table. Cheers. Oh, it's nice. And there's frosty mugs. I checked on the way. I said, how's that Kirchhoff taste? Oh, they, they said, say. excellent. 
I said, good, enjoy. Is that what they going? Is that is that they going to keep keep brewing that, or is that what's going to happen with that? Yeah. As of right now, it's it, more is being made. Yes, I mean they have to. It's so darn popular. I, I'm not exaggerating. If there were if there were ten people in Varsity Club when I was pre dinner rush, seven of them were drinking a Kirchhoff. And people, I saw. I don't know how many people at the Capitol were like, "How do I get Kirchhoff? Where do you find it?" And I said, "Honestly, I I mean I know where it is it's supposed to be, but maybe they're sold out." No, it's doing great. And I said this before that we had no idea how good it was going to be and the folks at chestnut brew works put together an absolute winner yeah and right now i'm just looking at the untapped to give you the most recent and rating way, that's why it's doing well because it's good it is good yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, oh, absolutely if, if, if it's it a legit like, beer you know skunk pee nobody else, people like <laughs> i'm not drinking that Excuse i don't me? care if it's name it but it's good yeah no i agree with you no if it was just if it was just like a beer by now, the fun factor of it would have worn out, and it'd be done. But I think it, it actually, continues to grow in popularity. It does. Don't you? It, it's continuing its climb. It's over. There are over thirty, well over thirty-five locations across the state. I'm gonna have to open a new the brewery in Golden, Colorado. <laughs> I mean, it's as of we as we record, it's a three point nine six on Untapped. 3.96. It's going up. It was 3.8 earlier, yeah, which was a great was. score. Well, all it the, has gone yeah, up. All the credit to those guys. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Bill and his team. Bill, his team, did a fantastic job of making a great beer. Great beer. So, well, nice. Anyway, spot check. Random spot check at one of the establishments in town. It was spot going very check. well. Here, I'm reading one. Here's a review. Inspection. Here's from Nathan O'Dell. Also had the cheesesteak egg rolls, which were very good, <laughs> by the way. I go nice with a kerchief. How about this? Nathan O'Dell, March 11, on Untapped writes, I finally got to have this much-hyped beer, and it did not disappoint. An excellent everyday beer. There you go. Right? Good description. That's what see, it is. Now there's been so much talk. People were like, oh, what's all this about? What's all the hype? No, you know, but- it reminds me a lot of Thompson's water seal. <laughs> you mean in taste? Oh, my God. No, here's what I mean. Thompson's water seal was the de facto water seal that people would use on their decks, right? Because they did an unbelievable job of marketing it. Mm-hmm. But here's the reality of Thompson's water seal. They were taking a shot now at Thompson's water it seal. It sucks. You talk to any contractor, they'll say, it's skunk pee. It's bad. But they did a great job of getting out in front and marketing it. Here's the difference. Kirchavale. Hope nobody's out selling the water seal industry <laughs> right now because that one's off the list. I'll go to number two. I don't even know if they need it. Oh, now, sorry. what happened with ours Schedule's is. I'm going to have to cancel the meeting with you. Don't have the deck ready. What happened with ours is this. We put it out there and the people voted. The organic word of mouth made this thing go like, wow, you got to taste it. It's really good. That's what makes me the happiest out of them all. That's what should make the folks at Chestnut Brewery. It's like they they made a beer, hit a home run. It's uh, it's the people's beer. It's an all day beer, all day, and that's what we drink all day long <laughs> here at the Billy. Yeah, Next time get- we come on, we gonna have a bunch of Kurt. Now, just oh. and a reminder, we re- this is our suggestion on Kirchaville. Drink your first, sip your second, and decline your third. We're all about safety here. Or have somebody drive you. Though, yeah. I've only had Kirchaville twice. Twiced. I had it last night. Did you? You've had, you you've had a lot of Kirchhoff. I bought. I, I didn't buy. I had. <laughs> I had three crawlers, that is which is thirty two ounces, and I save them for Sundays. And Andrew comes over and eats dinner. I get hit a little bit, and I get Mike. I might get a little bit more than Andrew does. <laughs> I might get a little bit more, and that's a good way to go into sixty minutes on Sunday night. <laughs> I'm Judy Woodruff, and I'm having a Kirchhoff. <laughs> and I'm Leslie Stahl. There's a new oh, beer yeah, in this. Stahl. I'm There's sorry. a new beer in West Virginia that has taken over. <laughs> in an earlier episode on CBS Saturday Morning, we first introduced you to the Whisperer, Hoppy Kirchhoff. Since that report, he's now crafted his own beer. Here's the story of how it's become America's new beer. Steve Pelly tells us more. <laughs> Scott Pelly. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Steve Anderson Croft. Cooper Steve, went to West Virginia. Steve Croft. Scott Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 
Three Guys Before the Game brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit BurdettCamping.com right now. $10,000 off on the Forest River Rockwood Ultralight fifth wheel. By GoMart, extravagant prices and prizes for you. Check it out. $500 GoMart gift card. For more information, visit GoMart.com. We love Reese's. You love Reese's. Everyone loves Reese's. If you don't love Reese's, it's on you. Took one of those down this weekend, by the way. Sure. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Both. Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. And by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Back again at some point. Subscribe. Pass the word on. We're out. Thanks for being with us. For our producer, Tinker Tyler Taylor Kennedy, Jingleheimer Schmidt. See you.